This is a short little follow-up to a video I did the other day about Deontay Wilder's attitude towards boxing compared to Tyson Fury's attitude towards boxing. Deontay Wilder thinks nobody can teach him anything because he knows it all already, whereas Tyson Fury is looking to learn from people that can actually teach him stuff. And so Tyson Fury said this about his current trainer, Javon Sugar Hill. He said, quote, I spent quite a lot of time with Sugar. We had about one, two, three. We've had four or five training camps now back to back. We even spent a lot of time in our holidays, holidays together where we were still ticking over, uh, still little bits and pieces. I've had a lot of time to get used to his style a bit more now. And he's a fantastic coach, the most knowledgeable, the most experienced boxing man that I've ever had around me by far. His boxing knowledge is second to none. Very, very, very good technical boxing coach. Best I've ever had in the last 10 years, I'd say for sure. End quote. Okay, so that's Tyson Fury talking about Javon Sugar Hill. Have you ever heard Deontay Wilder talk about a coach like that? You've never. I've heard Lennox Lewis talk about Manny Stewart like that. I've heard of, you know, many other people, Mike Tyson talking about Costamato, so on and so forth, because they are actually learning things from these people. Their egos are not so massive that they think there's nothing that nobody can teach them. Now, I'm not really in favor in most instances of a student master relationship between fighter and trainer where the fighter is like, yes, boss, and three bags full, boss, like the trainer is some kind of drill sergeant, particularly not for experienced pros. But the pros need to be intelligent enough and smart enough to understand that they can learn things from certain trainers, at least at certain stages of their careers. Valuable lessons, valuable techniques, tactics, maybe psychological approaches, and so on. And this is what Tyson Fury has with Javon Sugar Hill. This is what he was missing when he was with Ben Davison. And Ben Davison, by the way, I think he gets a bit too much stick for his ability as a trainer. Josh Taylor seems happy with him, right? I know he's inexperienced and sometimes the way he comes across makes him a bit of an easy target. Doesn't do himself any favors at times, but I think people are a little harsh on Ben Davison. Whatever the case may be, with Tyson Fury, Ben Davison's style, they, you know, that he was uh, teaching Tyson and what have you, or maybe teaching is not the right word. Uh, that particular style is something Tyson Fury knew inside out. He wanted someone who could teach him a different style, who could teach him different techniques. And Ben Davison wasn't that guy, so he'd gone as far as he could with Ben Davison. And by the way, this should be a lesson to Anthony Joshua. Because Tyson Fury and Ben Davison were close. Tyson Fury credited Ben Davison for helping him lose all that weight when he was in that very dark place. Helping him get back on his feet and come back into boxing. And of course, fight Deontay Wilder the first time many people believe he won, and so on. So this is someone who has a close personal relationship with Tyson Fury. It's not just all business, there is a friendship there. But Tyson Fury still put his own career and his own development as a fighter first and said, you know what, Ben, I'm going to bring somebody else in to help us, which is Javon Sugar Hill. Ben Davidson apparently felt a certain way about that. He wanted to be the head coach. He didn't want to be, you know, in a situation where there are lots of different cooks. He wanted to be the, the head chef. And so he decided to walk away from that situation, right? Because he felt whatever he felt. Anthony Joshua just doesn't seem to have the conviction. He hasn't up until this point. And, and again, Tyson Fury did this before he's even lost. Tyson Fury made the changes because he realized there were certain things in his game that he was lacking. And he made the changes before a loss came about. Whereas Anthony Joshua's had two losses now and he still hasn't got rid of the people in his camp that he needs to get rid of or added the right people that he needs to add. So there's a lesson here for AJ. You take preemptive measures to stop yourself getting beat unnecessarily. Yeah? He got Javon Sugar Hill in and he's been raving about what a great trainer and how much he's learning from uh, Javon Sugar Hill ever since. 
Anthony Joshua should look at that and say, you know what? I need to do the same. Bring somebody else in as the head coach. Robert Kraken can take a back seat. And I'm talking about somebody experienced. No disrespect to Angel Fernandez or all these other people. They don't have the experience of Javon Sugar Hill training top level fighters. Yeah? That's what Anthony Joshua needs, somebody with that kind of experience. That's what Deontay Wilder needs, of course. Yeah, he's got Malik Scott, who's a former pro, but who's Malik Scott ever trained? He's an unknown quantity in the capacity of a trainer. So we'll see, the ha- we'll see how that goes. And the reason that he's got him as a trainer, just as Tim Witherspoon said, by the way, in this interview, is because that's his former sparring partner and his uh, former opponent. And you're bringing that guy in to train you? (laughs) Deontay has such a fragile ego that he can only tolerate yes men. He can't tolerate anyone, never mind people coming in to challenge him. Because that's not really what a trainer should be having to do. A trainer should have a receptive student, a receptive fighter, who's going to listen, not necessarily agree with everything they say, but be open to trying new things. Yeah, be, be open to hearing constructive criticism. That's what a fighter should be doing. Certainly if it's coming from a trainer like Javon Sugar Hill. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below about the way Tyson Fury talks about his trainer compared to the way Deontay Wilder talks about it. I mean, he's saying Malik Scott has taught him nothing. <laughs> when have you heard Deontay waxing lyrical about any of his trainers? And again, compared to Anthony Joshua, where he's in a similar situation to what Tyson Fury was in with Ben Davison. Obviously, Ben Davison wasn't with Tyson Fury for as long, but he went through personal stuff with him. You know, the depths of depression and helping him get out of that and lose all the weight and come back to the boxing world and all that kind of business, there's a, there's a friendship, there's a bond. But despite that, Tyson Fury still did what he had to do by way of bringing in somebody else that could teach him more than Ben could teach him. Anthony Joshua seems, I'm going to say it, afraid to do that with Rob McCracken. He seems to, to have so much of a, I don't want to say a bond because I don't get the impression that AJ and McCracken are as close as let's say Tyson Fury and Ben Davison were on a friendship level. It's more like Rob McCracken is, a, is almost like an uncle to AJ or some senior figure in his life. That's the way he sees him. And therefore he kind of feels funny about firing him or demoting him or anything like that because he wouldn't want to disrespect him. That's the perception I have of that situation anyway. And these are the kind of things that are going to hold you back. At the end of the day, Rob McCracken is there because he's getting paid. And there's nothing wrong with that. But don't get that confused with he's there because he loves you so much. He's there because he's getting paid a lot of money. I mean, Rob McCracken, I have to imagine, has made far more money being Anthony Joshua's trainer than he ever made when he was in a boxing ring himself as a pro. Far more money. So this is a great earner for Rob McCracken, right? Again, nothing wrong with that, but understand that that's why he is this figure that he is in your life, Anthony Joshua. (laughs) I know I'm not inside your gym and I haven't seen you and Rob's journey together and all this kind of business, but sometimes when you are inside a, a, a partnership, a relationship, you can't see the forest for the trees. Whereas somebody on the outside looking in might have more of a bird's eye view and they can see the journey in its totality. They can see things a bit more clearly in some instances. Now, in other instances, of course, there are inside nuances and complexities that an outsider won't know about and therefore the outsider might judge it inaccurately, okay? This is just a fighter and a trainer. This is not two people in a romantic relationship, (laughs) I'm going to assume. This is not two people who are actually family members. No, it's a guy who trained Anthony Joshua in the amateurs, 
Now he trains him in the pros. That's what it is. If Anthony Joshua didn't have the talent that he had, in, you know, as an amateur and showed the potential and the promise, would Rob McCracken have spent so much time with him and have fought Anthony Joshua's corner so much if AJ wasn't as talented as he was? I'm telling you he wouldn't have. Because his thing as the head of Team GB is to get as many amateurs meddling as possible because that secures them more funding. <laughs> like it, that gets them more trophies and accolades and it's all better for Rob McCracken. So when he sees a talented fighter like AJ, well, what's he going to do? He's going to try and fight to keep that guy in, you know, on Team GB and whatever because he believes he can do things for them. And as a pro, it becomes even more about money. So I'm not saying that Rob McCracken is just some evil guy and this, that, and the other. No, 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 no. There's nothing wrong with making money. Yeah? It's a mutually beneficial relationship. The guy helps train you. You pay him for, for that. You know? You're both benefiting. But at this stage with AJ and McCracken, I think McCracken, to be honest, just to put it in a nutshell, I think McCracken is benefiting from the relationship more than AJ is now. And that's the point where you have to do what Tyson Fury did. Get him out of there. <laughs> you know, or demote him is what it is. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Come and join me on Patreon and access my weekly no holds barred censorship free podcast where we lift the lid on a wide range of controversial topics. It's not mainstream friendly. It's not politically correct, but that's the whole point. We dare to stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Hot Topics. You'll gain access to a minimum of two hours of exclusive content every single week, including podcasts, videos, interviews, live stream Q&A sessions, as well as my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. Not to mention a vast back catalog of hundreds of hours of previous episodes. You can listen via the Patreon app with the option to download in high quality MP3. We've also got a Discord server where you can come and chat and hang out with myself and other members. There's no contract, no commitment, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.